Hey, what is up mortals welcome to season 1 part 7 of what if Deku had a super speed quirk. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the story. Everyone, please exit the stadium in an orderly fashion. Causing a panic will divert heroes away from the issue at hand, Aizawa said in frustration given his injuries. Izuku was one of the first students to respond. As Izuku charged forward, he activated his quirk. Using his quirk, Izuku climbed into the seating area of the stadium. Izuku ran towards a crying child that was calling out for its mother. The cries caught the attention of Namu. The Namu rushed towards the young child. As Izuku went to help the kid, he saw the Namu throw a punch at the child. Izuku increased the output of his quirk and sprinted towards the toddler. Knowing how his quirk functioned, Izuku grabbed the Namu's fist and threw it at a Namu that was about to attack an older person. As Izuku ran towards the two Namu, he started to take the situation in. Remember to put a smile on your face. Keep the situation in mind. Izuku muttered as he remembered the lessons of All Might and Naita. The sound of thunder prevented anyone from hearing what Izuku said. As the two Namu started to recover, Izuku punched the Namu, sending it onto the field. Izuku grabbed the other Namu and threw it into a Namu that managed to corner someone. Izuku kicked both Namus away before extending his hand to help the person up. I will handle the creature. Please make your way to safety, Izuku said with a smile on his face. Despite the fear, Izuku felt he kept the smile on his face. Seeing Izuku trying to fight the villains, Katsuki sent an explosion at the closest one to him. As the creature charged at Katsuki, Katsuki released an explosion sending it into a Namu that was getting closer to a few students trying to flee the arena. Katsuki then charged at the two villains, realizing what his friend was trying to do. Ada decided to help Izuku out. Ada used his quirk to himself into the stands. Ada that kicked the nearest criminal while using his quirk. The Namu simply took the hit and tried to attack Ada. A small projectile slammed into the Namu's head, causing it to stumble back. You shouldn't try to replicate what another hero is doing. Nidai said as he looked intently at the villain. Every hero has a different set of strengths and weaknesses. Nidai took out a stamp and held it in a fist. Nidai carefully ducked to the side as the creature attacked him, taking Nidai's advice to heart. Ada decided to take a more linear path. Ada charged at the nearest Namu, seeing Minder randomly tossing the balls his quirk generated around. Ada chose to use it to his advantage. Ada kicked the next Namu into a section of the arena that Minda had covered in his balls. Minda, use your quirk to trap the criminals. Ada shouted at Minda to get Minda to focus on what he could do. Minda stared at Ada. Ada quickly pointed to the Namu that was trapped by Minda's quirk, with tears streaming down his face from the fear he was experiencing. Minda started to use his quirk to create an area to trap the people disrupting the sports festival. Izuku's plan of attracting the Nomus' attention worked. It worked a little too well. Izuku found himself surrounded by 40 of the Nomus that were attacking the sports festival. As Izuku went to a tackle from one of the Namu, another Namu grabbed Izuku's left leg and slammed Izuku into the stadium's wall. Izuku's entire body sent pain signals to his brain. Come on, keep the smile on the face, ignore the pain. Izuku muttered to himself as his eyes started to tear up. How many more civilians are left? Izuku looked around the stadium. A large portion of the stadium seating was empty. Most of the heroes busy trying to stop the Namu from further attacking the remaining civilians. Izuku also saw the rest of his class trying their hardest to push the Namus towards an area covered in purple balls. That was all Izuku could see before the Namu blocked his vision. Despite Izuku's best attempts to block out the pain, he could still feel his body aching. Realizing that he was cornered, Izuku decided that he wasn't going down without a fight. As Izuku pushed his quirk into overdrive, he noticed that pain in his body started to subside. Green light began to encase his entire body. This is new, Izuku muttered in shock as he watched the light encase his body. Overdrive never did this. Don't get distracted overdrive is extremely taxing. And I probably have only 5 minutes I need to start drinking something with electrolytes and cool down. As Izuku started to move, he noticed that everything seemed to take on a hint of green. As Izuku moved towards the closest Namu to him, a bolt of green electricity hit the Namu square in the chest. The Namu dropped to the ground as Izuku attacked the next Namu in shock. Katsuki saw Izuku push himself beyond his limit before another group of Namu descends on him. Damn it, these things won't go down. Katsuki grumbled in frustration as he looked at the group of students trapped behind him. Hey, extras, the closest escape route to the left. When the opportunity presents itself, try to make your way towards it. Katsuki set off a massive explosion as the students tried to make a break for it. However, before the students could make it very far, another group of Nomis started to attack them from the left. Katsuki launched himself towards the Nomis as fast as he could. Katsuki set off an explosion to slow the Nomis' advance. Before long, the group was surrounded. Katsuki would set off a blast each time a Namu tried to attack the students behind him. Nidai grabbed a Namu and threw it into the trap that the one of students had set up. 
Nidai saw the green light was emanating from the center of a group of Namus. A small frown appeared on his face as he watched the light bounce around the Namu. Good luck Midoriya, you're going to need it. Nidai sadly muttered to himself as he saw everyone else dealing with a group of Namu already. I hope you can last until a group of heroes can make it to you. Nidai quickly let out a deep breath and tried to force a smile onto his face. During the brief pause before another, Namu attacked him. Nidai looked up and saw the portals drop out, 60 more Namu before closing. Hirajiri watched as the Namu started to split the heroes apart. Hirajiri's yellow eyes narrowed as he saw some of the Namu being trapped in an area covered in purple balls. Hirajiri created a portal and stepped through it. As soon as he reformed near the hospital, he saw all for one floating in the air. Police vehicles were flipped over. The parking lot had several large craters. Trees were ripped out of the ground seemed to have officers and civilians trapped underneath them. For Kirajiri, the most surprising sight was the state of the hospital. Several doctors laid bleeding out as they were impaled by debris. Hundreds of patients were trapped under rubble from the walls being blasted. There was a massive hole in the hospital. One room with several people inside of it was left untouched. All for one pointed at that room. Very well master, Kirajiri said to no one in particular. This time Kirajiri would make sure he didn't fail Shigaraki. Kirajiri opened a portal and stepped through it. He was greeted by several officers who had their guns drawn. Before any of the cops could say anything, Kirajiri opened portals beneath their feet and dropped them in. Kirajiri only sent them outside to deal with all for one. Once Kirajiri was alone, he opened a much large portal up. He made sure to drop the bed Shigaraki was on slowly and the medical equipment connected to Shigaraki in the portal. An officer in a trench coat burst through the door as Kirajiri was leaving. Kirajiri bowed at the officer before saying, Master will destroy this room. If you don't want to die, I suggest you leave the building as quickly as possible. The officer stared at the closing portal for a few seconds before leaving the room. He looked at his phone and saw the messages from the officers protecting Yue, that the school was under attack. All Might heard his phone ring again. This time he picked the phone up. The panic voice of a friend greeted him. All Might forget about the hospital your students need your help, Tsukachi fearfully said. I think All for One is about to leave. Heroes in the area can help rescue people. Just go save your students. If All for One is there, I should head over to you, All Might with anger creeping into his voice. I can end this madness once and for all. I will be there as soon as I can. A portal just opened up behind All for Tsukachi was cut off a massive explosion was heard over the phone. The line went dead almost immediately. The symbol of peace stared at his phone in shock as the line went dead. Off in the distance, an explosion could be heard. Endeavor looked at the blonde hero briefly before he sent a burst of flames at another Namu. All Might, let us show these creatures why we are the top two heroes. You can tell me about the phone call once you focused on the fight at hand. Endeavor angrily said since he figured that the explosion was closer to the hospital. Nothing satisfies that man. An officer I work with told me to head back to UA. Before he was cut off, All Might said in annoyance. Then we respect his wishes, Endeavor said with an angry sigh. So, what are these things? My guess is there's some sort of creation that all for one made. These things have multiple quirks, All Might said as he glared at the Nomus, trying to attack him. That man can steal quirks and give those quirks to other people. The Nomus stopped attacking for a brief moment. This pause gave Endeavor enough time to take in what All Might just told him. With both heroes relaxed, one Namu lunged at them. Endeavor barely avoided the Namu. He noticed that the black and white liquid coming out of its mouth was slowly turned to sliver as it mixed together. All Might wasn't so lucky as the Namu sunk its teeth into All Might's right arm. Before we get back into the story, I would like to say that we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes over the hard facts of the anime presented. Now in case, you guys didn't know, we have a third channel called We the Celestial Naruto What If. We the Celestial Naruto What If mainly focuses on our Naruto What If series. If you are interested in content like this, please go check the description below or click the eye icon in the top right corner. Now with that out of the way, let's get back into the story. All Might let out a small grin of pain as he tried to pry open the Namu's jaws. The black Namu charged at All Might. Endeavor intercepted the Namu and started to burn the Namu. The Namu let out a howl in pain as it began to regenerate. Endeavor grunted and started to increase the temperature of his flames. All Might finally managed to pry the white Namu off his arm looked at his now bleeding arm. All Might grimaced and punched the closest Namu at full strength. Endeavor followed up by turning the nearest group of Namu to ash. All Might grabbed another Namu and slammed into the ground. The Namu that All Might sent flying collided with a building. As Endeavor created a spear of fire in his right arm, a Namu sent a spike made of bone into Endeavor's left leg. Endeavor threw the spear Namu that attacked him. Endeavor let out a grunt as he pulled the spine from his leg and cauterized the wound. I heard you were training some of the students outside of UA. Endeavor asked in frustration as another Namu lunged at him. What were you looking for when you made your selection? Character was what I focused on. 
All Might said as he forced a smile on his face. Raw power doesn't mean much if you can't put the hearts of the innocent at ease. In the past, I saw other people still nervous, even though a hero had enough power to stop any threat. Now it makes sense as to why you didn't select Shoto. Endeavor grumbled in frustration as he released a burst of fire. If this all for one guy thinks these opponents can stop us, then he has another thing coming. All Might grumbled as the Namu that bit his arm tried to attack him again. All Might simply grabbed the Namu's head and slammed it into the ground. With a strong right kick, All Might smashed the Namu's head into the ground. The battle at UA was more chaotic. Neither side was able to gain an advantage over the other. Ada looked around and saw five Namu near him. Ada sprinted at the closest Namu to him. As Ada went to kick the Namu, its left arm caught Ada's foot. The Namu slammed Ada face first into the ground in front of him. The force of the impact broke Ada's nose and bruised his forehead. The Namu picked Ada up and threw him into the wall of the stadium. As Ida started to recover, another Namu slammed into Ida's chest, breaking some of his ribs. The Namu then threw a punch into Ida's jaw. The blow, in combination with the pain from the broken ribs, caused Ida to pass out. Nidai slowly made his way over to Ida, being careful to avoid attracting the other Nomus' attention. Nidai then threw Stamp at the Namu on top of the blue-haired boy with glasses. Before the Namu could react, Nidai grabbed its head and threw it onto the field. Nidai then picked up Ida and started to move towards an empty escape route. All might your students are in trouble. Nidai muttered as he looked down at Ida to make sure he was breathing. The students here are doing the best they can. If you don't get here soon, some students might get seriously injured or worse. Katsuki rubbed his left arm as he stared down the gnomus in front of him. With a grimace, Katsuki let his left arm go and then released a massive explosion from his left hand towards the Namu, blocking the student's escape route. The gnomus on the left were blasted backwards. Katsuki and the group of students he was protecting inched their way slowly towards the exit route. Katsuki made sure to keep a close eye on the Namu. It took him a few minutes before Katsuki could get the students to an opening in the stadium. As the students slipped into the open door, Katsuki started pushing himself to force the Nomus back. Katsuki set off released a large explosion on his right to force those Nomus back. Katsuki briefly looked up to where Izuku was and saw a group of Namu on the ground. You just need to hold on for a little longer, Deku. Katsuki grumbled as he felt the pain in arms from the his quirks overuse. Where the hell is All Might? Izuku grimaced as the sweat started to evaporate. The Noma started to attack Izuku again. Izuku began getting a headache from overusing his quirk. Izuku launched himself at the closest Namu as they began to attack him. As the Namu swung at Izuku, Izuku dodged the blow and threw a punch at the chest of the Namu. Izuku tried to listen for the movement of the Nomus only to realize he could only hear thunder. Izuku started to notice that his legs started to go numb. How many of these creatures are there? Izuku muttered as he tried to stay positive despite the hopelessness of the situation. Kakan would be furious if I lost against these weaklings. Izuku continued to try and plan out his next move. Another Namu attacked him, and Izuku simply dodged to the right. Izuku then attacked a different Namu by kicking its leg out from under it. Izuku then moved on to the next Namu. Before Izuku could attack the next Namu, another Namu punched Izuku in the jaw, sending Izuku flying. Izuku let out a gasp of pain. I need to go to the support department and make Chan jest to my hero costume. Izuku stuttered, trying to distract himself from the pain. All Might and Nida had a point about learning from the situation. Izuku pushed himself up as the Nomus started to move towards Izuku. Izuku used the brief moment of space to jump back and analyze the situation in front of him. Izuku looked around and saw that Katsuki was starting to defeat the Namu around him. As Izuku went to move forward, his vision started to get blurry as he started to feel sick. Izuku's eyes began to tear up as the light started to feel blinding. Despite this, Izuku attacked the remaining Namu. All Might and Endeavor were pushing themselves to get to UA. As quickly as possible, they jumped onto the top of the stadium and looked down at the scene unfolding before them. All Might you help the person whoever is fighting that large group of Nomus, Endeavor confidently said as he pointed as where Izuku was fighting. I'm going to check on my stubborn son. I have a feeling his stubbornness is putting himself at risk. Before careful Endeavor, we don't know if other villains will show up to take advantage of the chaos. All Might said as he kept the smile on his face despite feeling fearful for his students. One of the Nomas punched Izuku in the nose. As Izuku started to fly backwards from the blow's force, another Namu jumped onto the green-haired boy's back. The boy went down with enough force to crack the cement around his body. All Might jumped behind the Namu and punched it away. Rest well, young Midoriya. You were able to last long enough for help to arrive, the symbol of peace said, feeling relieved that he made it in time. Let me finish what young Midoriya started. Since no one was around, All Might dropped the smile from his face and punched the Namu. The thirty remaining Namu were quickly defeated as the blonde-haired hero refused to let any of them near his student. Once the Nomus were defeated, 
All Might looked around and saw the sheer number of unconscious bodies. Thankfully the only bodies All Might could see belonged to the creatures that attacked Yue. All Might picked up Midoriya and started heading to Recovery Girl's office. A boy with red and white hair was busy fighting one Namu in a hallway of the stadium. The right side of his body was covered in small amounts of frost. Todoroki created several ice spikes that started traveling towards the Namu. The Namu simply moved out of the way of the spikes before charging at the boy. The boy froze the entire hallway as the Namu tried to attack him. However, the frost that formed over his body slowed him down. Before the Namu could reach the boy, a man with red hair punched the Namu and turned its face to ash. Shoto, that was embarrassing, Endeavor said as he looked at the corpse in disappointment. I already told you I have no intention of using my fireside, Todoroki coldly stated. Didn't you say you were going to reject everything that I stood for? Endeavor said as he stared his son down. That's what I'm doing. By not using my fireside, I'm rejecting you, Todoroki shouted. I see stubbornness runs in the family. Based on how much trouble this creature gave you, I would say you're at the furthest possible point from your goal, Endeavor said as a smirk started to appear on his face. I'm nothing like you, Todoroki shouted at his father in anger. There's nothing about me that screams I take after you. Your stubborn refusal to use your fireside, Endeavor said with a smile. Think about your childhood. My stubborn refusal to admit that All Might was stronger than me led me down the path you experienced growing up. That stubbornness caused me to block out everyone else. How does that make me similar to you? Todoroki growled, because you're doing the same thing, Endeavor said with a sigh. If you don't believe me, then follow me, without waiting to see if his son was following him. The number two hero simply started heading towards the arena. Endeavor stopped once he got to the entrance of the arena. Todoroki was following with a rather annoyed look on his face. See the bodies here, based on the injuries. I think these gnomus were taken down by your classmate with the explosion quirk, Endeavor growled at his son. No one in my class has an explosion quirk, Todoroki said defensively. Then list the quirks your classmates have, Shoto, Endeavor challenged the boy with red and white hair. What's the point of this anyway? Todoroki growled in frustration. Endeavor sighed as he walked into the arena. Endeavor looked at his son in annoyance. It annoyed Endeavor that his son couldn't see the path he was about to travel down. The anger was directed more at himself for the hardships and trauma he caused his family. All I see are the bodies of defeated weaklings, Todoroki growled at his father. Yes, but your classmates teamed up to defeat them. Some distracted groups of Namu. While others laid traps for the Nomis to fall into, Endeavor grumbled in frustration. By themselves, they weren't strong enough to win. However, unlike us, they accepted that fact and relied on their fellow heroes to assist them. I didn't need assistance. I was handling that thing back there perfectly fine. Todoroki stated coldly. I think you'll understand once your teacher explains who defeated the most villains in the class, Endeavor bluntly stated as he towered over his son. Stop pretending that you're rejecting me. That statement doesn't work when you're acting just like me. Thank you all for watching the video to the end. Now there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. On behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank the writer of this video and editors for this video. Their details will be in the description. If you're a voice actor, editor or writer, or you're interested in becoming one of those, go to the Discord that is in the description of this video and hit up the head of one of those areas. We're always looking for members to join us. That's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're interested and hit that like button if you liked the video. Until next time, peace out mortals, have a fantastic day.